Good morning and welcome to our Holy Mass. So glad you've been able to join us for this live stream. And as we pray for an end to this pandemic and a pray for a change in uh, opening up our churches once again, that we pray longing to be in communion with the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. As we enter into this sacred celebration, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon, peace, and healing. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let that there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. And God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place. Let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters were gathered together, who he called seas. God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth, and bear fruit with the seed in it. It was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit and the seed in it. God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning, third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars, God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning. The fourth day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be glad in his works. May the Lord be glad in his works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in lights as with a garment. May the Lord be glad in his works. You set the earth on its foundation, 
so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep, as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. May the Lord be glad in his works. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills. By the streams, the birds of the air in their habitation, they sing among the branches. May the Lord be glad in his works. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. May the Lord be glad in his works. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples crossed over the lake and came to the land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the cycle of readings, we now move through the book of Genesis and the creation story, and always with the perspective that God created all. There is a profound wonder in creation. It's actually um, science that says that it is the be-all and end-all um, is actually quite lame because the order that you see in creation, it, it is so phenomenal and we have uh, such a little grasp on how incredible it is. If you think the number of the stars and, and how light comes to us and, and, and we can see the light that has already been uh, hundreds of years passing through, space to come to this spot and then just just to think that in this universe in this in this place we have earth that in the right mixture in the right ways that it can sustain life and other planets it cannot and then if we go into from the macro into the micro and i'm not going to go on too long about this but into the micro just dna like look at the structure of dna and how how these Proteins and, and all of these things are ordered in a specific way. I'm not a cat. I'm not a dog. I'm a human being. And I'm differentiated in my DNA just in the pattern and the coding there. And to be aware, to be, have this awareness as human beings, we'll soon see in the order of creation how the highest creation that God gave was human beings, that we are aware that we're aware. This is incredible. It is absolutely mind-blowing. And in that order of creation, the order of science, and as we, as we look in wonder and awe, see, science is a discovery of asking questions and more questions and standing in awe of the created order before us. There is actually, uh, you can have a communion between faith and reason, religion and science. They're actually compatible because they help us in uh, asking more and more questions. That's the basis of science. And so as we're presented with this creation account, the most important thing is that God made it, and God made it good. And as we walk along in this creation account, we see that finally he takes dust of the earth, 
breathes his spirit into it, his Holy Spirit, his life force. And as he breathes and speaks that word into it, it is animated, it is given life. And yet through rebellion, through disobedience, through wanting to do our own thing the way we want it, to dismiss and to disregard the creator of all things and to say, we don't need you, which is incredibly arrogant, and that is the temptation that Satan does, then through that, God wants to restore all of creation. He wants to restore us to that relationship, that original relationship. And he does that through Jesus Christ. When we're presented here with, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, that Jesus, this is his second time to the region of Gennesaret. First time, he's greeted with that uh, demon-possessed man, and the people of that country kick him out. They say, D -d don't stay here. You just killed 2,000 of our pigs. Please leave. This time, when he comes across the sea, a very different reception. Because of the witness and testimony of one demon-possessed man who was set free and sent home. And he witnessed. And from that witness, many others came to Jesus to receive healing. What is the ultimate healing? The ultimate healing is to be restored to the right relationship with God our Father, through Jesus Christ the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus does signs and wonders pointing towards that ultimate healing. And so, we in the region of Gennesaret pray Jesus' authority that many, many people will come to discover who he is. And as we bring to him in the marketplace the sick, the suffering, the wounded, the broken, and ourselves who are sick and suffering and wounded and broken, that we can come to Jesus, restores us, the full stature of how God has created us. God looked upon us, said, it is good. Let us pray. We pray for the church, its leaders, that they may be attentive to Jesus' call in their life and that they may fulfill the great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a wounded, mixed up world that needs truth, that needs reality, that needs the Lord. Especially, we pray for persecuted Christians throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, Canada, for a change in its laws, to regard the dignity of human life, and to see that what God has created we must not destroy, that the laws of our country would change to protect the child within the womb and also those who are facing terminal illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parishes, for those who have joined us, for our family of parishes, for communities of Our Lady of Sorrows, St. Anne's, Holy Angels, St. Helen's, and St. Mary's, that we as a family of parishes will seek to do the will of the Lord and open our hearts to the grace of the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a soon opening of our churches, that we may once again be able to come to gather together to celebrate Holy Eucharist and all the other things that are involved in parish life, that we may see an end to this pandemic and new life in our parishes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, those who have been entrusted to our prayers, as we pause a moment to pray for them and their caregivers.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the intentions being offered at this Mass for all souls, for Peter Van Lannen, for the Byrne and Prendergast families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And finally, we add our own prayers and intentions to this as we pause a moment and recall them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious, loving and gracious Father, we give you thanks for all the many things that you give to us in our lives, and we especially thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for sustaining us. Help us always to give you praise in all circumstances. Receive our prayers and grant our petitions according to your will. For we make them in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, I come to show Christ humbled himself here. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and his glory. Sorry, of praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you set as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, filling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald Peter, our Bishop, Joseph, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait to the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers, the one bread and the one chalice, as we pray so to live, that made one in Christ, may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining for this online Mass, and we look forward to the day when we can have it in person. But in the meantime, continue to pray for the church, to pray for the family of parishes, to pray for the bishops, and to pray for the world that we may come through this not as wounded, but as strengthened. God bless you and God bless your day.